Okay, uh, starting out, uh, Byron Coward has come to me numerous times over the last couple of weeks, uh, disappointed his playing time. Uh, yesterday he came to me and said he wants to quit and pursue other opportunities. So we wish him nothing but the best uh, moving forward. Uh, SEC play, uh, very exciting for our team, uh, for our players, our coaches that were starting SEC play, going on the road uh, against Missouri. And when you look at Missouri, uh, they got playmakers on the offensive side of the football. Uh, they got a lot of speed at wide receiver. They got a quarterback that can throw it, and uh, you know they're they're very explosive on the offensive side of the football. Defensively, um, you know Coach Odom has kind of taken over the defense. I got a lot of respect for him as a coach. Um, he does does a lot of good things. You know when I look at their defense, their defensive front is disruptive, and probably the biggest thing is just trying to uh, predict you know, how they're going to play now that their coordinator is no longer with them and Coach Odom is calling the plays. But, you know, overall, it's, it's, a, it's a good challenge for us. We're on the road in the SEC. You've always got to be prepared. Uh, our message has been we got to get better each week. And uh, now the SEC play is here. we got to play our best football. So excited for that. Questions? Guys, what, how does the quarterback situation work now for Sean? Yeah, um, you know, Malik will be the number two quarterback. And, uh, you know, we've been saying for a while that we feel very good about him and the way that he's performed in fall camp, specifically the scrimmages, um, you know, was very impressive. And, uh, you know, he started out the first two weeks and he was our number two guy anyway. So he got a lot of reps with, with the two, some with the ones. Um, and we feel good about him, uh, you know, moving forward if something would happen to Jared. Will he play first opportunity? Or, or were you still confident? Yeah, I think now that he's the number two guy, you got to think differently, you know, as far as that goes. And, uh, you know, I know he's up for that. Who's the number three guy? Uh, you know, right now we're, uh, we're, we're working through that. Um, you know, uh, we've got a couple different options. Uh, and then Ryan Davis is a guy that we're also going to take a look at with some snaps. He did some last year with that. Is Jason Smith a possibility? Uh, no, Jason Smith uh, is going to stay on the defense side of the football for right now. I mean, if we had some injuries, you know, with one of these two guys, that is a possibility. But, you know, Ryan Davis will, will get some reps, you know, at quarterback position. And he did he did that last year, so. If uh, Devin Adams had the, the Devin Adams is, is in the middle of that. He's in that conversation, too. Obviously, you know, you saw him in uh, some mop-up role as far as that goes. As a walk-on, what kind of type of player is he for? Uh, you know, he's, if you watch him, every time he gets the opportunity to get in the game, whether it's spring game or whether it's the game, I mean, he, he makes plays. So, you know, Devin's in the room with him, and, um, you know, he at least knows the base offense. You know, he's been spending some time with the scout team, and uh, so he'll have to be more involved uh, with that. Yeah, yeah. see a guy that you feel comfortable with, you just got to get out of the game or, or – or Hilton comes off and somebody's got to go take one snap or Devin, something like that. Yeah, yeah oh, there's no doubt. He can run the base offense. The biggest challenge he has has been with the scout team the whole time. So, you know, Chip's got a good plan for him, um, you know, to be with the offense more than he has been. Can I send your statement about Sean yesterday, yeah. kind of announcing that he was leaving? You said that he made some decisions that were not in the best yeah. interest of the team or himself. Right. And I thought that or himself thing was kind of unusual for you. You usually just say it's a team violation, whatever. Yeah. Why add that? Well, I mean, I, I feel bad for Sean. I mean, Sean's a, a tough guy. Uh, he's a warrior, um, but he made some bad decisions, and I just I hurt for him. And that's the reason I put that. The in same there. kinds of decisions. What's that? Is it the same kind of decision over and over? That's between me and him. I mean, it's yeah, that's between me and him. Yeah, it's the defensive tackle. Tyrone Truesdale has been a guy that's played some. Mm -hmm. Who else? He and Gary Walker, the, the next couple of guys. Yeah, up. yeah, I, I think so. And Nick Cole's got the ability to come inside too. And uh, you know, so you know, Truesdale's coming on. Uh, you know, uh, Andrew Williams obviously is already in the mix. So uh, we feel good. You know, and I think right now our, our defense is what the number two defense in the country, and our defensive line has a lot to do with that. And uh, you know, we feel good about that that position, and we we feel good about the depth there. You said in July that in the last couple of years that quarterback depth has been the Achilles heel. Yeah. That you felt good about it now. Does that change at all? Well, I mean, about? obviously, when you lose one of, one of the guys that has experience, I mean, uh, you know, that's concerning. But at the same time, the opportunity that Malik Willis has now, which you know we've been extremely high on him, and so uh, I mean, obviously, when you lose an experienced guy, it does affect your depth. Uh, 
But you know, right now I'll say we got two guys that, that we feel comfortable with playing. Is this a recent thing with Sean, or has this been going on for? Yeah, quite I'll, some time? I'll ask between me and him. Because on a human level, you've, you've had to dismiss prominent players the last couple of years. If Sean was someone that had so much respect in the locker room, was commended by coaches and players alike for years now for his leadership and other things. Just how emotionally difficult was this for you, for the team, for everybody? Else? You, you know, just for me personally, anytime you got to dismiss a player, it's not a very good feeling. Um, and uh, you know. So that's, that's probably the best way to put it. As far as the interception, I know it's kind of changing get a little on yeah. football, but uh, mm -hmm. the interception the other day that, that Jared was picked off, yeah. do you kind of fault Nate Craig for not fighting for that ball a little bit more? You know, that was a boom-boom play right there. Uh, the, the kid made a really good play. He broke on the football. But uh, <clears throat> it's something that I know that, you know, Chip and, and Cody, you know, are, are working through the same type scenarios to – to be better next time it comes, but it was a it was a boom boom play. Gus, how do you practice not turning the ball over? Well, you know, obviously when you turn the ball over five times, um, we got to make more of an emphasis of that, and uh, so we will definitely do that. That was uncharacteristic of our team, uh, you know, over the years. So uh, the coaches understand that um, there will be a high attention to detail in the ball security. Uh, of everyone on the offensive side and everyone that touches the ball in special teams. And because, uh, you know, anytime that happens, I mean, that, that's coaching. And uh, that starts with me as a head coach. And uh, the penalties and uh, the turnovers, I mean, that, that, that's, that's something that's unacceptable. And, and our coaches understand that. And, and uh, it will be a huge emphasis moving forward. Not that it wasn't an emphasis before, but obviously whatever product you put out on the field, uh, you know, you've got to correct it. I know we asked a lot about uh, only playing Cameron Petway the last two games. Mm -hmm. is, is there a reason for that beyond just you want to play him is that maybe Cam Martin's injured? No, no. I, I, I think it was like, uh, I think I answered this earlier, um, but it, it was more of, I think, how the game unfolded. And it was a close game, and I think the security of a veteran guy in there. Uh, now moving forward, I mean, you, you're going to see more running backs and, and Cam getting the game and, and other guys, but uh, that was the thinking, um, you know, in, in that particular game. Coach, given how he runs, do you worry about Cam's durability at all? He's car carrying that many times. You, you know, um, you know, what did he carry it uh, two two games, twenty plus times uh, back back to back? I mean, obviously we we've got to take care of our guys, but. Like I said, as that game unfolded, it was a close game on a game that we should have won, and uh, we should have won by more. So I think that had a lot to do with it. Now, KJ will be back this week, uh, so that will definitely help uh, with that. Um, but, you know, Cam Martin is a guy that, that we know can go in there and, and do some things, and, and Malik Miller is a guy that, that we got a lot of trust in, too. KJ 100%? I, I'm not going to say he's 100%, but he practiced some last week. Uh, he practiced uh, Sunday, and uh, he's ready to play. I'm not going to predict right now, but I, I can't say that right now. I understand it was a close game and competitive for probably longer than you wanted, Gus, but, and what Petway offers by way of security there, but is there a lack of trust almost in, in ball security with, with either Cam Martin or Malik Miller? I mean, it's, it's still an FCS opponent. I understand it's mm -hmm. close, but... This is not an SEC team. This is this is not Oklahoma. This is an FCS team. If you can't put them in in a one-score game, then when when are they going to see the field? Well, uh, like I said, I've answered that question you know twice now. Um, that was the thinking behind that. It didn't have anything to do with uh, you know our mistrust with the other two. It was just a coaching decision, and and that was that was the decision made. Coach Are you, Go ahead. Are you not Go ahead. a little bit concerned about the death of these tackles? But you know, you lost two guys, I guess. Yes. Well, uh, you know, I, I think Nick Cole having that ability to come inside, I think that really, you know, helps you uh, with with experienced guys, you know, playing. Have you talked about offensive line? What you're thinking going into this week's game? Yeah, you know, uh, Darius, um, you know, he'll practice today non-contact, and we'll see, you know, how he progresses uh, during the week. Um, you know, what you'll probably see if Darius can't play is something very similar to the way the game ended. Uh, late, but we're hopeful that Darius will be back, and I think we'll know more uh, probably tomorrow. After reviewing film and seeing, you know, just one practice of cleanup, 
What is it about the, the running game that's being slowed right now? Yeah, you know, that, that's, that's my biggest concern right now. I mean, we've got to be able to run the football better. And, uh, you know, obviously Clemson has a great defense and, and they shut us down in the run game. But last week we didn't execute like we need to. And we've got to do a better job of executing in the run game. As you get in league play, you're going to have to run the football effectively uh, to win consistently. And, uh, you know, our coaches understand that. And, uh, that's really been a, a big point of emphasis. You said mostly with the offensive line you see it on film? Uh, you know, I, I'm going to just say it's a, it's overall execution uh, of everything. But, uh, you know, we weren't able to run the football effective enough Saturday, uh, you know, playing the opponent that we were playing. Yeah, that's better. Go, Go ahead. Even with with the, the turnovers, did you see a, a, a better tempo and, and yeah. just kind of well, energy on yeah, offense? Yeah, you know, if you can take out all the turnovers and, and everything that goes with it, there were some positives. And the tempo, we got some, some tempo going. Uh, and that was really a focus that we talked about last week as far as that goes. And then, of course, the, 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 in the passing game, the efficiency. Uh, that was also a, a positive, too. Um, you know, so so there were some things that you know I know that Chip can carry forward with the offense and uh, as, as they're progressing. Just from your standpoint, not just numbers, but how how much has has Jerry said progressed from the first game? Until now? You know, I think last week you, you saw when he has time. I mean, he's a, he's a very good operator uh, with his progressions. I mean, you know, there was a couple times when he hit Petway. Uh, on check downs so that that was the fourth or fifth option within uh, you know his read. But I think it's like I've been saying that the more experience he gets, the better. I mean, he's still really a freshman as far as experience is concerned. Um, and you know I even said that before the year that we got to keep that in mind. And uh, the thing about him is he corrects his mistakes. You know, um, you know we didn't throw the ball out, uh, way out of the pocket the first game or two. You saw him. Saturday do that, so I think uh, he'll continually uh, continue to pr improve. Coach, this has been obviously a, a rough start, uh, on field, off the field, whatever you want to put it in, in a bowl. But how are you feeling about the group right now, considering how things have started? Yeah, here, here's what you got to look at from head coach's standpoint. What you got to look at is, um, you know, the facts are you're you're two and one, um, and the team that you got beat by, they may be the best team in the country again. Uh, you're starting SEC play. That's what we've really been building up for. And uh, we've got a new co coordinator, a new, new quarterback coach, and, and they'll consistently get better and better uh, offensively as we go. We've got a very good defense. Like I said, I think we're second-ranked defense in the country right now. Um, our kicking game um, it is solid. Uh, I think we can be better. But if we keep in, improving, we can play with anybody in the country. I, I, I do know that. And um, so that's the way I'm looking at it. Well, any change in the final position? Uh, I'll, I'll be able to tell you later in the week. Uh, I would like a little competition to go on uh, in that position. We got to do better punting football. I mean, we got to get the ball down there. Who are you looking at besides? Um, Daniel Carlson is a possibility, and uh, you know, we'll see. But I'll know more later in the. Uh, I guess it doesn't seem like Daniel has been quite in the groove as much as last year. Even the ones he's made. I mean, last yeah. year it was like yeah. almost everyone was just split mm -hmm. in the middle of it. Even the ones he made have been so much have been close. In, in, anything you could see? You, you know, I, 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 you know, probably more than anything, he just needs to relax. I mean, he, he puts a lot of pressure on himself and trying to live up to the two years before. He just needs to be Daniel Carlson and loosen up and do his thing. And uh, and I think you'll see that. You know, moving forward, uh, he'll start to get in the groove. Yourself and, and her pan have said since preseason, you felt like you have seven or eight offensive yeah. linemen that could start yeah. and be ready. Right. Considering there has been some struggles, obviously, have you been surprised by that? Uh, you know, weeks? some of it has to been. You know, we, we do have two new starters, um, and then one of our starters is playing a different position. So it does take some time, um, you know, and, but I still feel that, that we do have that quality depth like we talked about earlier. And I think you saw a little bit of that, you know, with Casey Dunn getting in the game, and, and then we had to move our center to right tackle. That leads to my next question. Why, why every year does it take three, four weeks for you guys to get gelled offensively, whereas a lot of teams kind of know their identity, or at least mm -hmm. 
are much stronger offensively to start the yeah, season. Yeah, well, well, this year I, I think a lot of it has to do with what I just said, you know, about two new starters up front. And every year is different. There's been years that we got off to a good start. Um, but uh, this this offense will be a good offense. I mean, there's no doubt. And they're going to keep improving, and you'll see that every week. Gus, at least initially, did you feel like Jarrett was being a little too fussy with his, with his throws in the sense that he was looking for guys that were too open, he was scared to kind of throw into really small windows with Jarrett? Well, yeah, well, did you feel like that was an issue, at least initially? Do you think he's making progress to that end? Well, I mean, uh, you know, at first I think that was his first game, you know, to play in two years. I mean, so, and then if you look, his, his efficiency, I think mean, yeah. he's 32 for 37, and that's, that's pretty good. Um, and so I, I think you can see him progressing each week. Um, I thought he did a very good job last week, you know, and he threw in some tight wins last week. Yes, it's a long season. Do you worry about Petway breaking down um, with the amount of workload that he's been getting this first month? You know, I mean, you're you're an SEC running back. I mean, you know, you can look back at Trey Mason. He carried it quite a few times. And Aaron Norris Payne carried it quite a few times. And so, um, you know, that's just the way it goes. Now, the fact that KJ's back will definitely help. And, uh, and then the fact, too, that, uh, you know, uh, that you'll see the other two guys on the field some, too. So uh, we're, we're sensitive to that with not just him, but any kind of player, the volume, uh, if it gets to that point, you know.